Uh, welcome to Coffee Talk this morning. It is Monday, February 24th, 1023 a.m. Uh, just let me talk a little bit about my intentions with Coffee Talk. Uh, I'm Rather than try to summarize the news of the week, uh, I'll be honestly, I'm just drinking my coffee, going through my email, going through my Twitter, going through the Discord, and reporting on what's here. Um, I, that's it. <laughs> and I'll be posting that to YouTube. A few of you may be actually interested. Um, many of you may not be. Um, and that's fine. <laughs> so if you just want to drink coffee and hang out with me in the morning, I'd love to have you. And um, if you are unable to uh, hang out um, because of work or whatever is scheduling, uh, I'll go ahead and post it to YouTube. It's rather easy to do so. Uh, so this is going to become a, a, a tradition, hopefully, with me. And I will not be uh, trying to trying to do this in any other way. There's going to be a certain amount of boring just scrolling through Twitter and stuff. So I'm not going to be doing any highlighting or any trimming. If you guys want to go through it yourself, you can do that. But the focus will be on audio. So if you just want to be able to turn it on and listen while you're getting ready or something, that's fine. Uh, this is something I already do. So I figure, you know, might as well go on stream and do it. Um, and if, if I can provide some value that way, great. All right. Um, so there was no email this, this week. I went through and cleaned out all of my, my news groups. Um, I will post, uh, to the coffee talk playlist at some point, the news groups that I follow that show up in my email. And it, I mean, it's been rather, I've usually had about 50,000 emails in my inbox and I've actually managed to get them all down and I plan on keeping them down. Uh, but that means that I have more time to cover things like, like, you know, Twitter, which we'll do and, um, you know, and discord, which we'll do. So, uh, here we go with discord. Um, all right. So what has been going on this week? Well, nothing particularly interesting in emails come in over the last day or so. Um, and, but Twitter has had a few interesting things. Um, we did have, there's been, um, genetic analysis of the coronavirus going on that's using uh, pretty state-of-the-art technology. Um, why do you care? Um, and by the way, I'm going to always try to put that into the into terms of why would you care about it, you personally, um, particularly if you're just getting into technology. Because one of the biggest areas of, of tech that's growing is in, is in um, biotechnology. And particularly in North Carolina, there is a lot of biotech. Um, uh, the, the uh, what is it called, WRAL, the newsletter that comes in from the Triangle area, is constantly talking about the biotech um, stuff. Um, biotech, however, is going to require, you know, a significant college degree, if not a master's. So if that's your thing, great. If you like to do a lot of research, great. Um, all right. And speaking of biotech, um, there was one Discord that I wanted to show that, that Aaron posted. Aaron, I think he's up in Columbia now. Holy crap. Malware hidden in a strand of DNA hijacks a computer that analyzes a particular gene sequence. Uh, this actually came in, uh, and it says here, a group of researchers uh, from the University of Washington has shown for the first time that it's possible to encode malicious software into physical strands of DNA so that when a gene sequence or analyzes it, the resulting data becomes a program that corrupts gene sequencing software and takes control of the underlying computer. So yeah, we live in the future. <laughs> We're going to be uh, seeing stuff like that more and more. So yeah, there's, there's a biotech uh, angle on cybersecurity. So it's amazing how so many things are coming together. Uh, there's another tweet here. Hello, Putin. Hearing that Putin wants the four, a fourth place finish for Klobuchar in South Carolina, not because he necessarily wants her to be a nominee, but because he believes that this will enable her to continue to Super Tuesday, keeping the moderate lane fragmented. And there's a lot of there's a lot of news over the last day about Bernie Sanders winning Nevada, and all of the fallout over that. I mean, there's been people that have said that equated, you know, compared it to Nazis and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's it's just a total mess. And, you know, the politics of the D of the Democrats are just as corrupt a lot of times internally as they are for the Republicans. They just might not be as manifest. It's really hard to stay 
you know, interested in this. A full disclosure, I did vote for Bernie. Um, I don't mind people knowing that. Um, he, his election was literally stolen from him. He had overwhelming, objective, uh, objectively won the DNC, um, if you count the actual votes. But the people, the delegates, decided to overrule that, and they they stole the election. They literally stole the election from him, and that's that's not my opinion. You can go look up the the votes, the number of votes that he got. The delegates chose to not support him, even though he won the districts, and, um, and that's covered in Cyber War, by the way. Um, all right, so I'm I. It's too bad because I I don't look. I'm not going to comment. I was a big Warren fan for a very long time, so please don't misunderstand. Um, at this point, I'm a little bit ambivalent toward the whole thing, but um, um, I, I don't I don't even have enough information to make a decision like many of you. Um, I mean, if, if if anybody is truly given put in the time and and deserves to 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 get it, it's probably Bernie, given the amount of time he's been in office, the number of things he's done with his life. And the amount of non flip flopping the guy has done. I mean, there's lots of other things that people could complain about, but so anyway, that's politics. Um, let's see here. Wow, look at this. Um, Baskin Engineering says is responding to Bourne's College today. We're highlighting UC engineers who are tackling cybersecurity challenges. Let's see, a PhD candidate from UC Riverside National Engineering Week 2020. The new thing about our approach is that we are targeting the end devices like laptops directly. The first one we tried was Microsoft Windows. <laughs> then I went on to Mac OS and Linux Ubuntu. Hmm. I think this is, we talked about this before. Um, it's, this is why enterprises having firewalls is not going to save them in the future. Because they're targeting the end user's computer while it's running, either through phishing scams or through malware. And once those computers are taken over, um, it's, it's virtually impossible to keep them from reporting information back through the firewall. You'd have to shut the firewall completely down and allow your internal people to not even use the web. So once a laptop is compromised or once one of these computers is compromised, then you are done. While I was at IBM, they used to teach us during our security training once a year that the number one uh, pathway, the number one vector for taking over um, corporate data for corporate espionage was through stealing laptops. Well, if you don't have to physically steal a laptop anymore, if you can just attack a laptop or attack the person behind the laptop, you got a tr you got problems, right? So why do you care? <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that over and over again. The reason you should care about that is because that means that more of the responsibility for your personal security and the security of your laptop is transferring to the individuals who are being hired. And that means they need more knowledge about security. They need to be able to manage their own computers. They need to be able to be a one-person IT shop. They need to be the IT department. It also means that enterprises are going to be downsizing their IT departments because they're going to need to spend money on things to ensure their security and to train their people and to get better people who know how to manage their own security. And some places, I think, like the Department of Defense, have have um, requirements to get a plus or certified or security plus certified, uh, which you know is another conversation. But but you know they're requiring more of you. That's why you should care you are being required to know more about security. And the flip side of this, which is a benefit, is companies like GitLab or like IBM, I worked you know, remotely 10 years out of when it, maybe five times, they, is that they are giving you much more flexibility. So I was able to run Linux um, officially um, at, at IBM, but I was responsible. I was like, dude, if you're going to run Linux, you're not going to use our standard laptop image, just Windows thing, then you're on your own. But they were okay with you being your own, on your own. And this is part of the whole BYOD thing. Bring your own device. So the future of work is working remotely and managing your own IT. Taking care of your own security. Installing your own laptop. Maybe even buying your own laptop, I have a feeling. And, I mean, because really they can't. This is another fact is that nobody will teach you. Companies don't have the energy to refresh your laptop as fast as you would like to have your laptop refreshed. 
So if, if a company does give you a laptop, chances are it's going to be a crappy laptop. It's not going to do nearly what you want, even to get your job done, unfortunately. And yet you'll still be expected to hit your, to hit your, you know, your, your project deadlines and stuff. So it's going to be up to you to do it. That means it's up to you to understand how to run your computer. And it's up to you to understand how to keep it secure, how to, how to reinstall the operating system, how to keep it clean from viruses, which, by the way, the easiest way to do that is to just reinstall your operating system every four months or so. And that's actually not as hard as it sounds. It's much safer to do that than to try to depend on any of these crappy, including Symantec, antivirus. They will never, ever keep up. Antivirus software is not possible. It's not able to keep up. So if you're just careful about where you go and how you, what you browse and such, and your exposure to the, to the, to the broader internet in general, you know, there's other ways to address the security besides that. Even though the Department of Defense has put out a thing saying all of their private contractors who provide services to them have to have antivirus software. That's actually a rather naive approach to it because they're dealing with people who don't know how to reimage their computers. But I'm telling you, if you want to be the 10x engineer, you want to work for the forward thinking companies, you're going to need to be responsible for your own computer. And that scares some people to death. And that's why you need to know. Because if you want to work in this field, you need to learn to be a one person IT shop. And more specifically, a one person Linux IT shop. And unless you're even the graphic designers with Macs, you know, they need to know how to deal with their Macs securely. And it's actually one of the reasons that, that Windows is going to be you know, a questionable choice for a very long time, I'm, even though I'm you know, pro-modern Windows, um, because, because of the security consideration. So um, lots, of, um, lots of stuff there. Uh, looks like I've dropped my, my kilobytes per second. It is kind of constrained, but um, looks like, oh, here we come back. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's go down some more. Hopefully that is useful information. How much time we got? I'm going to make a hard stop at 11. Um, let's see. Democracy Now! Biden takes aims at Sanders on the gun record. This is the thing I don't like about politics is they always have to go after each other. I mean, I understand why they have to do that, but... Uh, the cybersecurity tweet business where uh, Zero Networks launches industry's first autonomous network access orchestrator. 4.65 million in funding. It just makes me crazy how much money get thrown at people for doing pretty much nothing. <laughs> like, this is good, but it's just so much crazy money out there. Switching and saving, it's a lifestyle. Progressive, no. Uh, I don't care who you're voting for. Putin can't be happy about this. Um, crypto mining, cybersecurity malware. And this We're not going to talk about cybersecurity and um, crypto today. Um, I'm a big anti-crypto person. I wish, I, I wish the dream of crypto was true. Um, so many people have been successfully attacked with the 51% attack in crypto that it's just a matter of time before a certain government or state controls 51% of any given crypto, which means they control everything that does. And that's, that's, that's a part of the algorithm and the math underneath it. And I, I wish I was wrong on that. I, I keep looking for an explanation of how that's not true, and I haven't found one. I'm not, I don't mean that to be FUD. I just, I really want it to be false. But the end game on it is, is that it can, it can be controlled. You know, theoretically, it can be controlled. It's been done a few times already. And now we just have to be aware of that. There's, it takes a, a lot of research to even understand how it can be controlled. What the heck? Um, okay, here we go. Let's see here. Google Ads can go eat me. Sorry, that's not appropriate. Um, this language is the bane of my existence. Good to know I'm not alone. Why do corporations speak the way they do? The pernicious spread of garbage language. How do we future-proof the initiative? Let's drop a pin in this and take it offline. With these key learnings, we can co-create innovative win-wins. 
just to level set for a moment, this would require an omni-channel push. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. What's the business critical ask? You know, it's true though. There's like a totally different language as soon as you put a tie on. In particular, or if you just work, <laughs> this is why I'm so happy to be out of corporate. I mean, it was just, it was just a mess. I know people who talk like this and I can talk like that. I've done it. I just don't want it to anymore. <laughs> it's like, can we just talk about getting stuff done like in, like regular people? Why do we have to like be so, I don't know. Just, just be real. Just be authentic. Just work. Just get stuff done. Don't, you know, it's all, we're all people here. Let's make solutions. Let's make answers to problems. How about that? Uh, we're hosting a rad podcast, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> back from winter break. That's nice. <laughs> Dell is going behind Kubernetes pretty hard, too. That's kind of interesting to watch. Do, 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 do. Where's some coffee music? Actually, I can't put coffee music on because... I'm going to try my pretzel. This this pretzel app, I'll tell you what, I had to take down my video promoting it because it crashes my computer every time. Not my computer, it takes down my OBS because it has some sort of memory leak, I am guarantee it. And um, so that's super annoying. Oh boy. Oh my God. I'm going to turn it down. All right. That's not too bad. Um, hopefully I, it won't kill my computer. <laughs> I can't make any promises though. I mean, every time I, every time my OBS has gone through the roof and I've stopped broadcasting, it's always been because I've been playing music. Oh, it got louder all of a sudden. All right. Well, whatever. I mean, this is good enough right here. Can you even hear it? That's a little bit too loud. All right. All right. Back. Where were we doing? Um, I can either do that or I can sing to you. <laughs> I can like sing. Hey. Do, 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 do. Sean Harris. The RSA conference on Moscone Center in San Francisco. I love that place. It's a major cybersecurity event this year. Big sponsors are pulling out amid Corona concerns. Hmm. The RSA conference in Moscone Center in San Francisco is, yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. I wonder if it's because they're afraid of people getting it or, uh, let's see. DigitalOcean, love you guys. How to launch a Node.js application on Docs by Block. Now, not interested. Something that's interesting about DigitalOcean is they actually pay people who write for them. So you can write an article for DigitalOcean and get money if you write a good enough tutorial, which I kind of like. They kind of like paid people to do something they might have done anyway. So it's kind of a great way to thank them. In, in many ways, there's so many things DigitalOcean does right, particularly um, catering to developers. Their UI is so much better than Amazon. I mean, it. I would never pick Amazon as a cloud provider uh, as long as I can get it done on DigitalOcean. And they have a good CDN. They have really good infrastructure. They just, they just are not the biggest gorilla in town so people don't go but there's a, a number of people who have gone with them for for hosting when needed when you know a jamstack approach uh, static site is, is something more than that is needed so really like that i do need to turn down my i just uh, bumped up my uh one of my endpoint drop what's their call i need to turn down the ram on that i forgot about that um because we, we're just gonna keep it small i was gonna make it bigger for people to log in but I'm, I'm going back to having people create their own linux machines whether it's on a raspberry pi um, i do like the ability to log into something remotely but it it doesn't need to be huge so right now it's a little bit too big sanders way much cooler back then hmm there's some coffee Okay, what else we got? Cybersecurity Excellence Award. Names finalists. I, that competition stuff always makes me crazy. 
And this, what does this have to do with blockchain? Am I following this person? Because I'm now not going to follow you. Oh man, how am I following you? Bye bye. <laughs> if you put unrelated hashtags in your tweet, I will unfollow you. I don't care who you are. Hmm. Lockout ransomware attacks with store with cloud with cloudy and storage. Hmm. Ransomware is a big thing, man. It's been all over the place. You guys know this. Um, <laughs> if your passwords are weak, you are the one to blame. It's another. This is another spam ad. There's a picture of people in court. And the person on the witness stand says their password was ridiculously easy to guess. So they should really take half the blame. That's pretty true. Um... Yeah, you should be. By the way, the safest passwords are the longest passwords. It's counterintuitive. Um, and they are the, they're also the ones that you'll remember. So a super long password, 70 characters or so, that is a phrase, like a sentence with actual punctuation, is a much safer password than eight really ridiculously crazy characters. Um, but because it's so counterintuitive, people pick very dumb passwords. Computers don't care. So... Uh, and that's not just me saying that. You can go get, you can go confirm that all over the place. I think Adam Ruin Security covered that as well. He also covers something called security theater, which is um, what so many people are peddling. They're not things are not really particularly secure, but they make us feel secure. So yeah, get a password that is long. Also, the safest, ab the absolute safest password is no password and using a Yubi key, because you physically have to have possession of the thing. I have one of these. Um, I have no association with them, but I absolutely love it because every time I want to get to my password file, all I have to do is touch the key. So, so yeah, if you're a hacker out there and you want to hack me, that means you have to get my key from me. That means you have to, you know, steal it. <laughs> and that's the only way. So I think you're going to see more and more physical security implemented through things like YubiKeys. Scaling Ventures is an eight-week course offering our real-time interactive online classroom from the Harvard Business School. Promotion. Bye-bye. Um, I do like that. Look at that, man. Look at that classroom. He's got all these people up on the screens that are talking to him from his, from his, like, that's pretty cool. The classroom of the future. The classroom of the future. This reminds me of the Professor Messer the other day. He had something similar to that set up. I mean, I like that idea. I like it. I really do. I just don't know. I, I don't I don't want there to just continually be a barrier to people who can teach. So so how many people have a multi million dollar, you know, classroom where they can teach a bunch of people with, with full screens? Not so the the, the answer to this education problem is connecting people who know and have the skills with the people who don't know and don't have the skills. The answer to the problem isn't institutionalized education. The answer to the problem is organic education, a lot more of it. So the more we can remove the barriers to education for the common person, the person who knows the person who has worked in the industry for 20 years and doesn't have any free time because all they're doing is what they are potentially going to help somebody else learn. Do I want to hear some academic lecturer about, about, you know, something that's irrelevant and, and they haven't even done it for the last 10 years? Hell no. I could give a shit what they think. And, you know, this is the thing. It's like and the, 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 the Professor Messer, you know, God bless him. But, you know, he's doing the same thing. And then what does he do? He's teaching how to how to ace the A plus test. He's not teaching how to do the actual IT. He's teaching how to t pass the test. So it's like three levels of indirection from the actual skill involved. So when I see this kind of stuff, it just makes me angry because the answer. The answer to our education problem, I really, really believe this. We need more people who know who have the skills to choose and be able to share what they know with those who don't know and want to know. We need more mentoring. We need more one-on-one. -on -one. We need more apprenticeships. We need more knight and sire. 
that's what we need because that's how humans are learning it's how they've always learned you don't need some academic study to tell you that that's how people best learn because it's it's built into us it's a truth that has existed since the dawn of time the best way to learn is to learn from somebody who knows now those people who know are not always the best person to to communicate with you and they might not work with you which is why one-on-one -on -one is so important because you might not get along with that person you know I've met a lot of system administrators that were way too gruff for me to ever learn from. You know, they were, you know, the definition of bastard operator from hell. And it would be hard for me to learn from them because of their impatience and stuff. They were like house, you know, that doctor. Um, but then there's other people who are more of my style. My point is learning is a human endeavor. And it happens between two humans who have a trust relationship. It doesn't happen between some pompous academic and a bunch of subjects that he's now going to inject his knowledge into. That's not how it happens. And it never has happened that way. And these, a lot of people learn through these systems, but they learn despite the system. They're not learning because of the system. All right. Time for me to move on. I talk about that all the time. I'm going to continue to talk about it because this is why when you see a big multi-billion dollar thing, I'm thinking that's the wrong direction. The right direction to go is to identify the minimum necessary to empower someone with skills to be able to share those skills with another person. And all you really need is two chairs and some computers. Sit next to them, help them out, piano lessons. And when you see this kind of shit stuff, <laughs> sorry, um, somebody who may potentially want to teach or become somebody who shares thinks to themselves, there's no way I can do that. I can't, I can't afford a $500 microphone. I can't afford, you know, a multi-million dollar classroom. And so they go, I can't possibly do that. I can, I can never do that. And besides, even if I could, I couldn't support myself for, with it. Well, fine, keep your job, but share what you know, share what you know, share what you know, pass it forward, pay it forward. And it doesn't have to be a bunch of people. It can be one or two people. You know, find a couple of people that are like, that, that are like interested in you. And they're like, hey, you know, could you tell me how to do this? I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do it. Well, why don't, how about Tuesdays? You know, would you, would you mind paying, you know, 30, 40 bucks for my time? I mean, that's the math going, well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's like way more affordable than I would pay, you know, if I were to go to an $8,000 eight-week boot camp. And then, and then you're not bound to them. You're not bound to the boot camp. If, it, if the mentoring thing doesn't go well because you're not a good fit, fine. End it. How much money have you lost? Maybe $800 for 16 weeks. You know, you have your own computer, you bring it. You're going to need to use your own computer anyway, so why add a bunch of IT equipment? One of the biggest mistakes I've ever made was I put too much into IT equipment that I didn't need. And what I could have done instead is I could have just had people bring their own equipment from the beginning. And if they're not willing, a lot of them are just trying to try out and see if they want to get into that. And for that, a summer camp is great because then they can use your equipment and get a sense of whether they want to do it or not. And then after that, they can come, a, they can, you know, decide, well, you know what? Yeah, we're going to get a computer. We're going to invest two, 300 bucks in a computer to learn Linux and learn web development and learn, you know, cybersecurity and system administration. And then they bring their own thing. And now they have a tool. If they don't have a tool at home, what's the point? And if they have a tool at home, they can bring the tool with them. So they can bring a laptop and guess what? You'd save yourself however much money you would have had to pay. So if there's anybody out there listening to this who's thinking, how can I make a little bit of extra money? And how can I help people learn what I know? Just do it. Piano, piano teachers do it. Guitar teachers do it. Martial arts instructors do it. Private yoga instructors do it. Why, why not tech? Why, why not create a model where you can share what you know with somebody who wants to learn it and make a little money in return for your time? And by the way, that's not selfish for you to ask for that. That might be your best friend. It might be somebody you've long known you want to help out. It's still not, not appropriate for them to just take your time for free. It's not. It never is. So you need to value your time too. I don't think anybody should ever give their time away for free. Would, would you come up to a, a yoga instructor and say, Hey, I'd like, who's happens to be your best friend and say, Hey, I'd like a private lesson next week. No, you'd be uncomfortable. If you knew somebody was employed as a piano teacher or guitar teacher, say, Hey man, teach me to play guitar. It's like, I'll, I'll pay you, you know, 40 bucks. 
Oh yeah, I love a private lesson. So, you know, okay, let's keep going. Am I over time? I got seven minutes left. But that's like one of my favorite things to talk about. So you're going to hear about that a lot. I really, there's two, two main goals of my life right now. And the one is to facilitate empowerment. In other words, to help people get stuff, skills uh, that they can do things. They can be empowered, whether or not they want to get a job, whether or not they, they want to pay the rent, whether, whatever it is. Once you're empowered, you can do things with your life, whatever that, that is. And the other one is to encourage and motivate more people to take on the mantle of mentor. Take on the mantle of mentor. And, you know, go for it. You never know. You might actually really like it. And as you age, and I, you know, I'm in my 50s, but as you age, retirement takes on a completely different meaning. Now it's an opportunity to share what you know. And, and also to somewhat keep up on what's out there. Now, there's a lot of people who have no business mentoring because why? Because they, they got into a company. I've, I've knew people like this at IBM. They got into the company and they didn't keep their skills up. There's a term that somebody used on the Twitter. I can't find it here, but it was called continuous learning. So CI, CD is a big buzzword in tech right now. Continuous integration, continuous deployment. And CL, continuous learning. You should be actively and continually learning all the time. And if you're not, you're not going to be employable. You may or may not stay in your little job, but at some point you're going to be out of it. And in your retirement, you're going to have to you know, relearn everything. So you should be continuously learning and you should learn how to do that. That is the most important skill you'll ever learn. All right. Um, IBM security. How much time I got? Five minutes. Um, here we go. Um, uh, India to cite Lauterberg. If us raises CAA religion, I don't even know what that is. Cyber flashing is never a good look. Oh boy. Not interested in that. Data privacy careers. Axon launches first connected app for law enforcement that live streams drone video directly to Axon evidence. Wow. Those drones are going to be everywhere, man. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. A hacker's life. L script raccoon. Blah, 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 blah. What is this? Pen testing tools. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Hack, hack for job, Dermap, an advanced web directory of file scanning tools. Be more powerful than Durbuster, Dur Search. Huh. I'll go look at this one. Um, this is a Git, GitHub map. An advanced web directory and file scanning tool that will be more powerful than Durbuster, Dur Search. Huh. Well, this is definitely getting starred. And I'm probably going to bookmark this too. I, I want to just follow it. Um, I need to get more into the bug bounty. I've done a little bit of it. Oh, it's a Python 3 thing. Oh, God. <laughs> There's so much security stuff done in Python 3. It's all in Chinese, too. Huh. Well, um, yep, let's see. Uh, we got Jason Kelly from IBM with Scott Rosefield from Wired. At Wired 25, we spoke with IBM's Jay Kelly about... How blockchain helps communities recover faster following a natural disaster. Nope. Bullshit. Um, this year IBM brought the story to life. I want someone to tell me how the world is going to be safe from 51% attacks against all these cryptocurrencies. Why is everybody ignoring this? And just looking the other way. Is it because they don't understand it? Or is it because they're trying to hide their flaw? This is really... This is really... Oh, that's an ad, of course. This is like seriously troubling me because I, and I really want an answer. I want to be wrong. I want somebody to um, take, take me on. It's like, how come this old, oh, the 51% takes a tremendous amount of computing power? Yeah. But that's, why do you think that all the countries are interested in, they're all courting, what's his face, the guy who, you know, made Ethereum. They're courting him because they want to build a huge, and they've already done it in Iceland, one guy. And they're, they're building all of these different things. And they're, 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 why do you think all these state actors are so interested in this? Because they have the resources to create a 51% attack. We already know they've done it. with the, They're close to doing it with Tor. So as soon as they get that much control, what happens? Why, isn't, why aren't people asking these questions? Oh, they'll never get that. That takes way too much processing power. 
Another question they're not ans- ans- asking themselves is, what if everybody used Bitcoin? We were starting to do the math the other day. Um, if every single human used one of these cryptocurrencies, there wouldn't be enough power on planet Earth for it. Not to mention the computing power. Like, well, that, that's not a problem. We'll overcome that later with quantum. Blah, blah, blah. Well, if you, when quantum comes, we have a totally different problem. So there, there are some serious, serious questions about the sustainability of cryptocurrency, and nobody is talking about them, either because it's unsexy to talk about it or because they just don't want to think about it. They're in denial because they think they love the tech so much. So I think uh, this is this is coming from, I mean, I wanted to believe in it. I seriously did. There's the, the ability, you know, if you, if you, if you, without these flaws, you know, the ability to decentralize the way they do is, is pretty amazing. But the dependencies for, on our power grid and the dependencies on, on, um, you know, maintaining some distribution of control are still so high that it's still fraught with risk. There's people who have executed successful 51% attacks multiple times at this point. So why are people still so fucking fintech crazy? I don't get it. I just don't get it. And I, I honestly, there's only two explanations. They don't know or they're choosing to not talk about it. And either of those is terrifying. And I, it maybe, maybe, or no, actually there's three possibilities that I'm full of shit and I need to be, somebody needs to explain to me why these concerns I have are wrong. And I, I, I want it. In fact, I would pay, I would pay good money. I would pay 50 to hundred dollars to someone who can tell me exactly how a 51% attack is not going to completely uh, destroy this whole thing. As soon as a state actor gets that much because they have the resources to do so, you know, I want to be wrong, prove me wrong. So anyway, that's probably a good rant to end on. <laughs> this is coffee talk after all. Pretty intense coffee talk. Let me have a little more. It's funny. I, I have a feeling that coffee talk is going to start out being kind of slow. And by the end, I'm going to be like doing this because the coffee will have hit me. <laughs> you, could probably, you could probably do a study just on that. <laughs> Watch how the coffee affects Rob by the end of his. Plus, I'm, I'm reading Twitter and Twitter is hugely triggering. I, I would rather I would rather discuss things in a stream all day instead of. <laughs> instead of this but I have been falling behind ooh a collection of inspiring programming lists manuals cheat sheets one liners big data analytics science python javascript r react yes go <laughs> let's see what other thing we can put in there oh, it's not it's, not, it's worth looking at ooh neural networks oh I like that picture okay that gets a bookmark Summarizing data. Mmm. Mmm. This is some good stuff. All right. I'm going to bookmark that. I love that they added bookmarking to Twitter. Because you can come back to them later and not, not be terrified. <laughs> You're going to lose it. Um, so thank you, Dr. GP. Pulupaka, am I following you? No, I'll follow you. All right. Um, I should, I'm a little bit over, but I'm just going to do a couple more. Um, don't just live your life, optimize it. That sounds silly. Uh, hacker's wet dream, internet password book, keep track of all your username, passwords, and web addresses. (laughs) (laughs) No, and you know what? This is, this is false. False phantom, you fail. Hard code, hard copy of a password book is actually better a lot of times than anything online that's like that's like how all the drug cartels do their stuff they don't have any electronics they're like they're like Battlestar Galactica that doesn't have a network right the, the like like uh, Adama didn't ever network his um was it yeah Sancho what does that promote no uh open it feel good to be appreciated New GTK website design goes live to boost Linux app development. Interesting. Um, GTK is still a good widget interface, um, but Qt has destroyed it, even though Qt is very much a corporate kind of thing now. What's the first video game you ever finished? Uh, I don't really care about that. 
Christopher Lawrence is a encryption guy. Adventure and even the pre-adventure universe of Atari I knew about. The Easter egg secret room. Yes, I played that a lot, actually. Uncovering mega implant attacking commerce. Mage cart. Don't know about this. Skimmer implant spotted in the wild. Hmm. Not enough of a security person to understand that. I had is epic. Sometimes I feel like it is growing a it is growing about this fast. What? Uh there's a picture of a guy with a with dreadlocks. It's like a it's like an octopus hat that has like like tentacles hanging down. <laughs> um Rook the sacred tables of Sinai, the rich pick the pieces carved with it. Uh, let's see here. Jim hacked. MGM hack exposes personal data of 10.6 million guests. Holy cow. Celebrities, including Justin Bieber, were among those whose data was stolen. <laughs> Why would you put Justin Bieber as the example? <laughs> um, I don't think I want to read that. That's just sad. I mean, we got hacked. Um, I think I'm done today. I'm going to go back and. Uh, I'm going to take a break. I'll be come back to read from the Tree of Yoga, and then I'll be doing my yoga, and then I'll be back um, this afternoon off mic to do some coding during session. Um, if you've checked in, thank you uh, for saying hi. And uh, you can look for our Coffee Talk on YouTube pretty soon here.